Tax Slayer Bitter Bowl. Uh, it's going to be Saturday at noon uh, in Jacksonville, uh, televised on ESPN. And uh, Coach, uh, thanks for joining us today, and we'll throw it up for opening statement, and then we'll have questions. Sure. Uh, it's good to get back, uh, get everybody back in town. We have everybody back now 100%. We had a couple guys yesterday that had a couple flight issues, but they got in late last night. They played one day in practice. They have to get their COVID test today. They have to clear that and get the results back before they can practice. But other than that, we are uh, darn near 100%. All of our guys got back yesterday. They took their COVID test. And uh, I want to say there was 157 results we have back at this point in uh, – and we're 100% clear at this point. So let's hope it stays that way. We have to do another test on Wednesday. So um, we got some good practices in prior to our Christmas break. And again, the guys are back. It's um, you know kind of nice uh, the, 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 we could have a normal week. Um, we play on a Saturday, so today's a typical Monday for us. We are ahead a little bit, so we got work done. Uh, to offset some pressure on on our Tuesday and Wednesday practice, so anxious to get back out there today. All right, if you will, uh, please use the raise hand feature in order to ask questions for Coach, and we will begin with Larry Vaught. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, good morning, Mark. Good morning. I, I, don't, I don't have any great insightful questions for you this morning. I'm just kind of wondering, what was Christmas like for you and your family? How nice was it just to be able maybe to enjoy a few stress-free days? Well, it's, it's very rare for you to have no insightful questions for me, Larry. So uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> a little different for you. There's not much for us to talk about right now, huh? Not a lot of news in the football world, at least on my end, the past couple of days. Uh, but Christmas was really good. It was much needed. It was a good, good break. Um, I really needed to spend some time with the family, spend some time with the kids, and that was really good. We enjoyed ourselves and relaxed like most most people. All right, Josh Moore. Mark, uh, I guess that you may not even know this, I guess Terry Menard was named as third team AP All American. I guess just you know, just thoughts on just all the kind of honors the guys have kind of gotten over the last couple of weeks and. And maybe where Darian is with his, his decision there on, on maybe what he's going to do. Um, yeah, Darian receiving All American honors, um, no surprise there. I think he should be even higher. I think he has, um, you know, really had a good year. And if he decides to come back, he'll be, you know, in my opinion, he could be a consensus All American. Um, but uh, where he's at in that decision, we're just gathering information. Darian's been very thorough. He's been trying to talk to as many people as he can. I've tried to get him as much information as I can. Um, I'm waiting to get back the official uh, written documentation from the NFL, and I believe uh, Darian will le lean heavily on that information. But uh, I'm not sure. We, Like I said, we've, we've had talks. Um, I'm not going to constantly, um, you know, try to persuade uh, Darian one way or the other. My job is to get him as many, as much actual facts um, that I can from, from real people, from NFL people, and not people just telling him everything he wants to hear. Because that's one of the problems that happens with juniors is everybody on the street and all the agents wants to tell him, you know, everything he wants to hear. And, and every player, every player deserves that opportunity to play in the NFL. I want them to, and if the time is right, then then we give them every blessing. And so I don't know. I don't know where it's at. I want to. I want to get more information. I want to get the accurate information from the NFL. Give him that feedback and have him make an accurate decision for him and his family. Uh, I love Darian either way. I think he's a pro either way. And um, you know that that's his decision. And it's my job to help uh, get him real real clean information. question will be from John Hale. Mark, apologies that we've asked you this, I think, every time we've talked to you since the end of the season, but uh, in terms of seniors who might use that extra year of eligibility, have you had more of those conversations, or is that going to be something that's after the ball? John, we have been so spent, man, since the last time we talked, these guys needed some time off, so we all did. So, so you know, we've been 
in the office working, but I haven't thugged, you know, talked to them or, or you know, they, they know they have that opportunity. We talked to them. They needed some time off. They're back today. I'll see them today at 1 o'clock in a team meeting. All right, uh, Nick Rash. NC State has a couple of really talented backs. What, what are their kind of strengths, and how do you try to take them out of the game? We actually really like both of them. They both are really good at getting yards after contact. We do feel like Seven has some home run ability, uh, but they're both just really good players. They're they're both uh, really solid. They 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 they're hard to tackle. They get yards after contact. I'm curious too, with just the ACC. It's back to back years you played an ACC team in a bowl game. Is there any sort of uh, constant when when? Looking at film in that conference versus the one you're in now, is there a big difference between how you prepare for an ACC team versus an SEC team? No, there's no difference in preparation. All right, uh, Lonnie Demery. Mark, you uh, – Lonnie, we're not, we're not getting you. Okay, Tim, we'll go to the next question. Uh, Gary Graves. Mark, uh, if, if you could, when you kind of look at how Kenneth Dorsey has his you know, development in a program, especially you know, with the challenges that he faced uh, a couple of years ago, I mean, what, what do you say about his, his diligence and his perseverance through all that and what he's meant to the offensive line? Well, again, it just says an awful lot about him. There's uh, many people that, um, you know, would have to, you know, definitely consider whether to put your body through um, the stress uh, that, that it takes to compete at this level after going through what he went through. Uh, there's a lot of people would have second thoughts about that. You know, Kenneth and his family really have not. I think the doctors have given him, obviously, the uh, – the ability to do that and to to play the game that he loves um and we're just very proud that he's out here that he's playing i think he's a young man um that is uh, truly can count his blessings that he's out here playing a game that he loves to play we're glad he's here and we're proud of him he's becoming a leader he's becoming a a, a better football player each and every day and um you know we're certainly very grateful that he's here uh, because as you know he has a teammate that that wasn't so fortunate Josh Moore. To, you know many coaches um, throughout the country and you know we talk but um, I wouldn't say specifically about that issue I mean I think things come up um, you know the culture of your team the challenge that we have of keeping joy uh, within this season during such a, a stressful and challenging year I think that's been well documented we've talked about it I do feel like our team has healed some I, I know that helps in our preparation it helps with their mental uh, well-being and um, you know we feel better we feel stronger I know we had great practices prior to the break and I hope they continue through this week um, you know and I think you know again it's a testament to the work that we've been doing for three four five six years in trying to really you know create a very positive culture uh, within our program Big Gabriel We've talked to you throughout the season, obviously, about some of the, the problems and challenges your team has faced this year. But going into the bowl game, what are some of the good things that you've seen in the wins that you'd like to see more of in the bowl game? Well, I think if you're specifically talking about, you know, the football aspect of it, you know, besides the, the, the mental preparation, I think the football end of it is, you know, when we're – you know, when we play together, I think offensively, you talk about balance. You know, when we are successful, we have our balance. And, 
and we're able to throw the ball at least ef efficiently and effectively to keep people uh, you know, a little bit on their heels and not be so predictable. And defensively, it comes down to really, uh, you know, that, you know, I talk about it all the time, but it's just true. Just with that attitude and with that mentality. Um, I could go off on a rant right now because it just kind of, you know, again, you think about things that happen. But when our team is, is mentally focused and ready to play and we're in great position, Brad's going to have been position. Our defensive coaches are going to have been position. It's a matter of, of really straining and executing and being mentally sharp and being dialed in. And there were many times this year when I was a little disappointed, to be, be, to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, and I feel like when we're dialed in, when we're attentive, when we're playing with a, with a chip on our shoulder and an edge and, and mental sharp, you know, we're sharp mentally, uh, good things are going to happen. Ed Spencer? <clears throat> Mark, with everything that, that this team has been through this year, even starting back with, with Chris Oates and dealing with COVID and, of course, losing – um, John Schlarman, were you surprised when, when you guys met as a team and, and decide whether to play in the bowl game that, that your kids were all in? Because, I mean, look, let's be honest, it's not going to be a normal bowl experience um, than, than years past, you know, and it, obviously it hasn't been a normal year, but, but your kids seem to be all in. Without a doubt. I was pleased because, listen, I, I think, you know, for the program, for coaches, for all of us, you know, it's easy to want to do those things. You know, to, to talk about them, you know, hopefully many years later saying, hey, look at the stretch we had and look at the run that we had. And, and um, you know, and, and so, but, but I would not do that at the expense of our players' mental health. And, and I, would, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I, I absolutely was not going to influence them to do this and to play this game because I know I'm the one standing in front of them every day. And believe me, when you're standing there sitting and talking in front of about 130, 140 people every day and you look them in the eye, you have a pretty good feel uh, for what they're feeling. And, uh, you know, and, and it, it was a challenge and, and they were spent. And so um, I, I was pleased uh, with the result of the vote. I was, I was happy uh, that they got a chance to get away and refresh and mentally recharge. They know I'm going to try to take care of them. I'm going to try to make an extremely positive experience for them in any way I can. Uh, we're going to have a good practice today, and then we're going to go as a team and have a really nice dinner uh, at Malone's and, and try to spend some time together and take care of the contact tracing and really spread out over some time, but, but sit and try to enjoy each other's company. And, uh, you know, I was pleased with it. So, you know, uh, I guess that's the word I keep on coming back to. I'm glad we're going. I think it's the right decision. Um, I think, you know, and in, in, in mainly I feel that way because that's how they feel. And I feel the joy that they have right now getting out there playing the game again that they love. Um, it's not a normal bowl experience. It, it's, a, it's an away game. So for them, for people think, oh, it's a lot of fun. It's, a, it's not. It's a grind. It's work. It's going back and forth from home, cutting into their break, you know, again, at a time when they've been mentally challenged. And uh, I'm excited because the team's excited. We've, we've had a you know, good, good experience so far, and um, you know, I'm happy for them. And, and now it's time, let's go win the game. Anytime we get in this position, the competitive nature comes out of you. You want them to enjoy themselves, but we want to get better. Uh, we want to improve, and we want to win. Um, so uh, you know, again, that's, that's how I feel about it. Lonnie Denver, are you going to try you again? Yeah, Coach. We'll try this again. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, Happy New Year. You too. Uh, and uh, I want to say, uh, I want to ask you about Billy uh, Hockman. Uh, he's a nephew of Ryan Hockman. And, uh, and I was wondering uh, if, you know, if, if watching, you know, uh, what kind of comparison do you make between the two guys? Uh, are there any similarities there whatsoever? Uh, what have you? I, I you know, really haven't put that much thought into it, Lonnie, to, to differentiate between the two and, and all that. So uh, uh, I'm not sure, you know, about the comparison. Happy New Year to you as well, though, and all of you guys. What's the, the 
biggest area of growth you've seen from Keaton Upshaw over the course of the year? Obviously, we see him catching passes and making plays, but maybe some of the things that, that we don't see readily. I, I think he's playing with better pad level. His releases are better. He's playing faster. And, um, you know, letting you know letting the plays come to him. There's times, you know, for big men, you know, they're maybe looking a little too early for the ball. I mean, we have to play with the athleticism and the speed that he has. And, uh, you know, he's, a, he's only a sophomore, and he's gotten better with every opportunity, and I like what I'm seeing. All right, Larry Bob. Well, Mark, I'm assuming this will be the last game for – Max Duffy, when he's gone, how much is he going to be missed? Do you think he's been so good, he probably hadn't been as fully appreciated as what he should be by just the average fan and maybe even average media people? Yeah, I think, I don't know. That's a hard question. I think, you know, him winning the Ray guy a year ago really gave him, you know, a lot of recognition that he deserved. And uh, that's a major award. It's the biggest award he could win for himself along with being an All-American. Um, so, you know, I think I think it's been a really good experience for all of us. I mean, Max and I have a really good relationship. I think he thoroughly enjoyed his time here. Um, I'm grateful for him. Uh, the job that he did for us, I'm quite certain that, that, that the fans do as well. Uh, we're going to miss him. But he did a good job of helping us recruit another Aussie, and hopefully we'll keep that tradition going. Josh Moore. Hey, Mark. Uh, I wanted to ask about the defensive line uh, this year. You kind of touched on defense and maybe some things that you did well, didn't so good. Pressure was kind of something y'all seemed like never really got going this year. Is that something? How do you kind of work on that in the interim here, you know, when you have you know, a lot more time to kind of prepare? And then just going ahead, maybe looking at why that happened way this year when the last few years it's been a pretty strong area yeah yeah I mean that's again that I think that's a fair criticism we're, we look we're looking at it hard uh, we're looking at it whether it's uh, scheme whether it's um, technique whether it's individual uh, athletic ability um, we know uh, we feel like we had a big time player in, in in JJ and we still feel that way unfortunately he's out right now in this game and uh, you know it'll take him a while to get you know, really back to 100% early next year, but you felt like a guy like JJ was going to uh, develop into an elite uh, pass rusher. Uh, you know, Boogie, you know, definitely can create some 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 great rushes and does a very good job. I mean, he's been good for us for years, but I think it comes as a whole, a whole package. You know, what's going on? Are they getting rid of the football quick? We're, you know, poor rush lanes, you name it. Uh, again, just like most things, when, when you come up short in certain areas, you have to look at everything. Everything starting with yourself schematically. What are we doing? Are we putting them in a position to be successful? Are we covering the guys long enough to let them get there? Are we creating enough pressure with, with uh, you know, our opportunities and, and pressures? And so um, that's shared responsibility um, that we understand, have already looked at, and will continue to try to get better and also try to continue to recruit an elite pass rusher. Um, you know, because that's what that's what we need. John Wong. Hey, Mark. There's been a lot of lighthearted banter and excitement about Vince calling the plays on the interview that I heard him on. He was pretty serious about it. How confident do you feel about him, and and uh, how much free reign is he going to have? Well, it'll be a collaborative effort. That's for, that's for sure, as it always is. I think you know, with putting the game plan together. But uh, I have all the confidence in Vince. Vince has done a, a great job. Any responsibility I give Vince and have given him through his time here, uh, he's done it and, and he's done it very well. So um, you know, he understands. He's he's like recruiter he heads up that effort all the time but when you put responsibility like this in front of him he takes that with a challenge also and let's not kid ourselves at the end of the day uh, we're all competitive people and uh, Vince has an opportunity he has an opportunity to prove himself and um, you know and so I'm excited for him but uh, there's a lot of us in there and trying to put together a good game plan um, you know that will come together and be effective for us. Gary Graves. Go, go ahead, Gary. Uh, in the course of, of keeping these guys dialed in, you know, over this, this season, was there any, anything unconventional that you did to, to like um, the, the move? You know, I mean, did you have any kind of you know comedy nights or movie nights or something? 
Yeah. There, there's always things you try to do, um, you know, that you try to just keep things, you keep it a little bit off balance. I mean, I wouldn't say there's anything over the top uh, that I did. I'm always trying to be, um, you know, reading the team and feeling the pulse of that team and trying to change things up and have fun with them and uh, create energy for them. But but I'm not going to lie, it was a challenge. It was a challenge for them and, and uh, for all of us. I feel we have done things of that nature. Um, you know, once the regular season was over and we're getting ready for this bowl game. So, um, you know, but during the regular season, um, you know, it was hard with COVID and trying to play games. And so going and doing fun things and things of that nature and even getting together in, in our team meeting, um, you know, I, I, I tr we tried to do it virtually, but, but I just didn't feel the connection, you know, and had to start getting them in the team meeting room at whatever expense that was going to be and not not to be negligent but I had to get in front of them I have to see them and so we kept it under 15 minutes we tried to cover their you know always have a mask on but I had to look them in the eye and talk to them as much as I could because early in the year it just uh, just didn't feel the same to me we didn't have the same connection and uh, you know some of that was out of our control and uh, so we're, we're doing our best to repair those relationships. Not not so much repair those relationships. Always do what we try to do and build those relationships. Jeff Drummond. Hey, Mark. I was wondering in your preparation for this and, and watching NC State uh, film, has there been any personnel uh, for those guys that, that, that really jumped out at you off that and caught your attention? Well, again, we talked about the running backs. I think they're really good at yards after contact. They really are. They're hard to get down. Uh, you know, they're, they're just both really tough runners, um, you know, and you feel like seven got a chance to, to create some explosive plays. It really has some juice. Uh, their wideouts are really uh, big. Um, they do a nice job of creating space. Um, they use uh, their leverage and, uh, you know, they create some space and go up and get some jump balls. With the tempo of their offense, again, I know Tim, Tim and I go way back, their offense corner, they use tempo. And we know, you know, tempo creates problems. Let's not kid ourselves. Sometimes it can hurt an offense, but a lot of times it helps. And um, they do use their, use their tempo to go extremely fast and then to create opportunities down the field. And they have big wide receivers that could go up and make some plays. So we got to be ready to contest those. All right, John Wong. Hey, Mark, I, I don't think I missed this, but uh, in terms of the quarterbacks, so what are you anticipating in terms of snaps for uh, each of the guys in the game coming up? We'll see how it goes. I mean, Terry's our starter. Uh, I wanted to use this opportunity to continue to develop our young guys. I, I sure would like to play them. I talked about that, um, you know, with the quarterbacks and with Terry. But, you know, I want to win the game, too. And if Terry's really playing well, then then, then we'll ride it out, and we'll see how it goes. So it's, 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 you know, it's really like that every week. I expect Terry to play well, uh, but I know our other guys are preparing extremely hard as well. John Hale? Holding on that, Mark, what development can those young guys on offense get out of this period, even though the scheme's going to change when Liam gets here in January? Oh, there's an opportunity to get better every time we step on the field and every time we step into a meeting room. You're constantly, you know, reading, th you know, seeing what the defense is doing. What are your options? What are your reads? Even if they change in a new system, you still have an opportunity to get better every day. Your accuracy, your footwork, the way you throw the football, um, you know, and, it's, and again, the discipline of your eyes. It, it's no different at any position, but it's extremely important to quarterback. Larry Vaughn. Mark, was just wondering last week when you had a chance to look at some of the younger guys who maybe didn't play a lot during the season. But was there any guy or two that really kind of jumped out at you that also about your freshman defensive linemen? What do you kind of, how you felt about them and what are you looking forward for? Yeah, I really just, I, I hate to single out guys, you know, because I feel like, you know, right off the top of my head, I mean, I feel good about all those guys. I've said that. I think, you know, Trayvon Ripka is a guy that, that was maybe behind a little early, but we always felt like had great upside uh, because of his length and, and he's twitchy. And, and, you know, and so he's a guy we're bringing along. We've talked about Oxidine uh, all year. We've talked about Josiah Hayes all year doing some really good things. And so, 
um, you know, I think they're, they're all working hard and, and, and doing good, and I think going to be really good players. And we talked a lot about Vito this year. He's, he's showing out and, and uh, doing some good things, has a really bright future. So um, we'll see. Um, you know, I think, you know, on the other side of the ball, Cummings, you know, is a guy that, that's, that's showing up. He's strong, earnest. Uh, shows some flashes again a very big strong receivers going up making some tough catches so we'll see how it goes you know they, we've got three more days here of good practices and and uh, hopefully they'll continue to get better all right we have time for a couple more uh, first will be Derek Terry yeah Mark um, kind of along the lines of what Larry was talking about at least that corner Eccles is going to graduate Kelvin's already gone and Jalen Well, Andrew Phillips is a guy that we're very high on, and, and Carrington, both of those guys, we're, we're you know high on those guys. We think they they got big upside. And uh, Carrington's been playing. Uh, Andrew is looking for the right opportunity, but he's had really good practices, and he'll get some snaps in this game. So I feel good about both of those guys. And we'll close with Lonnie Demery. Lonnie. Uh, Mark, this time last year, um, Patrick was uh, claimed he was 100%, and uh, he went out and, and he, uh, he played like he was, and uh, he, he, was very, he was very pumped about about playing. This year he comes into the season, and uh, and he, he he starts off really, really, really good, and uh, of course he had you know he had some setbacks, so to speak. Uh, but overall, let me know uh, where you think he is uh, in terms of his his overall ceiling. I mean, uh, I know he's going to get better, but uh, what, what, what is the overall ceiling? Yeah, I think he, you know, he's a guy, you know, he's he, he's hard to, um, how do I phrase this the right way? He's sometimes not honest with me because I'm like, Josh, how you feeling? I'm good. You know, he, you know him. He's just got an unbelievable attitude, work ethic, uh, refuses to miss anything. Um, you know, I, I was – visiting with him you know prior to the break and told him that you know take a day you know let's try to get you healed up and and he's like you know doesn't want to do it and um you know I I, I think it'll it'll take some more time than we had right now for him to be a hundred percent I hope he's close to it in this game I know he'll give us everything he has um like he always does uh but that's you know leadership and that's uh, somebody that's always willing to, to give for others. And he's out there every day, and he, and he goes as hard as he can. And, and uh, you know, in the South Carolina game, finally, I think it would, it would have to be the South Carolina game. I was just like, at the end, you know, because even though we had the game in hand, you know, it just, you know, there's something about it. When you're getting the ball run on you, you know, it just pisses you off. And, and But you see Josh out there late in the game just giving it, everything he has till finally we got brought him over on the sidelines and I'm like Josh that that's it man you're you're done you're done for the day you know root on your teammates but that's just who he is he's going to empty his tank every time he practices and every time he plays and uh and that's a, a great person you know I admire his work ethic and the way he goes about his business and I'm quite sure all his teammates do as well Okay, Coach Stoops, thank you for your day. Just thank give you. you some reminders. Uh, 